Hey, Ethan's. The odds argument is one that I get quite often. Um, creationists basically say that the odds are too improbable for things to have happened on their own. Uh, as an accident, as they call it. And then they spout numbers. You know, for example, I found one uh, website that uh, claimed that the odds of one cell forming uh, was 1 in 10 to the 2,000th power. Okay. And they go on and on, and they have all these infinite numbers of statistics that they use to try and say that the odds are against this happening. Now, this is a really, really bad argument, and Christians should really just stop using it. I'm not going to make this one of my for the last times right now because simply it's so complicated that it's harder for them to understand this, so I may have to go through this several times. Um, but let's just start with some basic things, and let's understand the concept of the odds. Okay, Odds and probability are somewhat the same, yet they're also somewhat different. What I mean by that is, let's take an, an NFL football team. Now there are 32 NFL football teams out there. So if I were on an NFL football team, I would have a 1 in 32 chance of winning uh, the Super Bowl, because 1 out of 32 teams will win the Super Bowl. However, that's not how it works. Me being on an NFL football team means much less than if Peyton Manning was on a football team or if, uh, you know, take your favorite player, I don't, I don't care who it is, Tom Brady or Brett Favre or any of these superb athletes that are out there, you know, the, the, the best of the best have better odds than average Joe. So if you take Joe and you put him on a football team, he does not have a 1 in 32 chance at becoming a Super Bowl champion. Okay, It's just a simple fact of the matter. So some things are more likely, some things are more probable than just a basic by chance odds situation. Which takes us to the idea of atoms forming and things of that nature. And I had someone who posted on one of my videos, he said that uh, the odds of a single oxygen atom coming together were 1 in 48 billion trillion gazillion jillion. Uh, it, you know, I, I don't, again, they just kind of make up their numbers. They never have to justify their, 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 their statistics. They just you know, insert them and it's supposed to be something. Uh, supposed, that I'm supposed to be impressed with. But the reality is, is that that's not true. The odds of one oxygen atom forming are one to one. And here's why. Because when you have a hydrogen atom, and you have a hydrogen atom, and they're under immense pressure and they, you know, fuse, you end up with a helium atom. And when that continues on and on and on, and you that builds up, you get the heavier elements. So over time you will end up with oxygen atoms. That's just how it's going to work. Um, if that were true, then we would expect to see hydrogen being the most prominent element out there because it would be you know, the, the, the purest of form, or, or so to speak, uh, so that uh, you know, heavier atoms should be less likely than the, uh, the lighter atoms. And that's exactly what we find. So that fits perfectly. So it's simply the way that it is. Oh, well, something had to make it that way. No, it didn't. Um, because if it was any different way, we'd be talking about how that is how it is. Okay, so the odds aren't, uh, these odds don't mean anything, is basically what I'm trying to get to you. You can't have uh, a situation where something just exists and you say, oh, well, the odds are incredible against it being that way. It doesn't matter, that's how it is. Okay, um, you know who's setting these odds that you're you're claiming? Let me put it to you a different way. Let's say I buy a lottery ticket. Now, in the Mega Millions jackpot, the odds of winning are one in one hundred and seventy-five million seven hundred eleven thousand five hundred and thirty-six. Okay, so the odds of me winning the lottery are very slim. However, if I were to buy 175,711,536 tickets, all with different numbers, my chances are now one to one. Okay? So now let's take life on Earth. You say, oh, it's so perfect, which is a wrong argument anyway, but 
if if we if we take your argument at face value that earth you know was in, is in such a perfect place uh despite all the desert frozen areas um the fact that uh you know, multiple ice ages have happened and, and all that business. And, you know, never mind all the times it wasn't so perfect. Uh, right now it's perfect, and so, you know, right now is the only thing that counts, and so the odds are great against it. Well, take your odds, divide that by the number of planets, okay? Being that there are trillions and trillions of planets out there, uh, you know, we, we have no idea how many there are, but we know that there's more than, you know, I could ever count for you in my lifetime or my grandchildren's lifetimes um, the simple matter is, is that the odds of one of those planets having life on it actually gets to be pretty good once you divide it all out so just like the multiple lottery tickets that I could buy um, the fact that there will be a planet um, is actually pretty likely that it, one would have life especially since things just seem to be set up for it just like everything else just like the idea that Peyton Manning would be you know would have a successful football team because he is you know a premier athlete in the sport of uh, football the odds of life forming on earth are pretty good okay so that's just the way that is all right um and now let's move to the, the next stage of this this argument and that is where you 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 state that since the earth is so perfect and oh the, everything is just the, the odds are so far against it and what I'm telling you is that no it just simply is it doesn't matter what the odds are and let me explain to you what how that works let's say that the fiber used to make my shirt came from a cotton plant that was located um, 200 miles from my home Okay. The fiber used in my pants, on the other hand, was located on a cotton farm 200 miles the other direction. Okay. And they just happen to be perfectly apart from each other. Now, what are the odds that that would happen? You got to take every single cotton field on the entire planet, divide that out. And then you have to take the fact that there are all the different shirts that I could have chosen uh, to purchase and add that into your mix. You can then add in the fact that uh, there were multiple shirts of the same type and I could have chosen any of those. So, you know, there's that problem. Then it has to be shipped to where I could purchase it from. So you add that in and say we're going to have these immense odds of the likelihood. But in the end, it doesn't matter because what we did was we took an end result, decided that that was the way it was going to be and said, huh, what are the odds? You know, and I have a, an earlier video where I talked about odds, where I talked about the uh, a deck of cards. You know, the odds of me pulling out the ace of spades is the very first card, if I choose one at random, is one in 52. Doesn't matter uh, unless I'm trying to get the ace of spades. Okay? If I just reach in and pull out a card and it's the five of clubs, the odds were still one in 52 that I'll pull out the five of clubs, but it doesn't matter because I just pulled out a card and it could have been any one of them. The end result is that I simply pulled out a card and the odds of me pulling out a card are one to one. So what are the odds of life on earth happening as we have it today? The odds are one to one because that's what happened. There is no, you know, well, it, maybe it would have went the other way. Well, if it went the other way, we'd be talking about how that happened. And its odds would have been one to one. See, the odds of the New York Giants winning the Super Bowl last year are one to one because that's what happened. Now, we can talk about the odds of who's going to win this year based on how strong each team is. And right now, certain teams will be ranked at the bottom. Some will be ranked at the top. But we have to base that on actual probability, not on the odds. And before you math guys go crazy, I'm using those terms in a in a, in a loose manner. Uh, by the way, that the creationist argument is presented, um, the probability of a good team winning 
the probability of having 175 million lottery tickets, the probability of life on Earth and all the things that happen naturally happening are one to one because that's simply how it works. Okay? So, um, one last thing before I go, and, and here's why your argument is, is useless to begin with. If all of your suggestion is to tell me that there is a God, and your probability of a God existing is supposed to be better than my chances of you know, science and our understanding of nature being correct, then is, if one God is more probable, doesn't that mean that two gods are even more probable? Or 20 gods are even more probable? Don't take my word for it. Think for yourself.